So we're going to start with the punch today. Dollar crisis, EFCC plans massive raid on Forex dealers. Drugs, wanted Lagos hoteliers, six houses, 270 million naira seized. Campaign, Coconso to recruit 1.5 million soldiers and policemen. Commuters lament, want Lagos drivers back. How late Ulumakaye battled illness in, in, in um, London? Hospital says associates. Why I am better than Atiku and Obi on economy says Tinumbu. Davido autopsy likely as police free six workers and detained two. Okay, which story? Major headline? Major headline. So the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Tuesday carried out simultaneous operations against bureau exchange operators in Abuja and Kanu. Um, you know, the Naira had slumped to 857 Naira to a dollar at the parallel market. And um, they said they had to raid the two cities. They were able to get a number of illegal BDC operators and individuals suspected to be customers. And they are also planning to extend the raid to Lagos, Onicha, Ibadan, Port Harcourt, and other major cities across the country. They are not telling anybody when they are going to do that. So, um, also, the EFCC arrested the Kogi State House of Assembly candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, Ismaila Atumei, and two others with 326 million naira cash and also 140,500 USD cash. Uh, they said when they came into um, Hotel Zone 4, who say Abuja, they took a lot of people into custody. Some um, parts of the story, I said that they had released the people. Now, economists are, and experts are dissecting what is happening, saying that the fact that the um, presidency gave the go-ahead for the CBM to, you know, redesign the Naira is what is causing this issue. Now, they are redesigning the Naira. They are looking out for people who have stashed money, cash, in their houses that when you come, they pick you up. So people are no longer trying to go to the bank to lodge in the monies they have stashed in their houses. They are now going to buy dollar. And that now made um, yeah. dollar become very scarce. A lot of people are now hoarding the dollar and it's rising. And now it's going to cause a lot of inflation. Even the budget that um, the presidency has done for 2023, they need to review that budget right. because we'll not be able to meet up with the deficit. A lot of things are going to be really affected. We are highly... Um, a country that imports, everything yeah. is based on importation. So that this is actually the wrong time to be redesigning the Naira based on what we are facing through mm -hmm. in our economy. So it's been a back and forth and oh. back and forth. Okay, okay, let me take the story concerning yesterday's uh, meeting, Ashiraj Bolaj meeting with his, with, um, with his vice um, candidate, um, Dr. Kasim Shatima, were there yesterday with the organized private sector, it included amongst many others, Alaji Dangote of um, UBA Group, <laughs> as well of um, Dangote Group, um, Tony Elumilu of UBA Group, um, the chief um, of Access Bank, that's um, Aig Omokwede, that's the chief executive of Access Bank, and even the, the, the MD, the executive access of, the, the MD also of Access Bank, Herbert Wigwe, and all the business leaders were there yesterday, and about nine governors of Kebi State, Castina, uh, I think Kwara State, Ogun State, Oshun State, Kaduna, not Castina, Kaduna, Kano, Kebi State, and Lagos State, and Plato State were all in attendance. Also, um, um, the presidential candidate said specifically that he would push to <coughs> hit double-digit um, GDP, <coughs> gross domestic product GDP for Nigeria. He said a minimum of 6%, but definitely he's, he's going to try to see they can hit at least 10. He also said that there has to be a partnership, he's going to continue partnership <coughs> with the private sector in the sense that they both have to be, not at, not at war as their enemies, but to ensure that both of them come together and must be inseparable allies combating the mutual enemies of scarcity, underdevelopment, joblessness, and those things that mess up the country. And it was a really interesting outing because he and um, his vice were able to articulate what they're going to do. And they brought a team of young people also. I was really mm -hmm. surprised to see quite a lot of young people in their cabinet, well, in their team, mm -hmm. who were able initially who independently um, explained what the administration will do if they get into power. And they also had um, quite a few women also involved. So... We'll see how that goes, and um, it's good that at least the private sector is engaging these leaders on this level. So let me take the story of another candidate from the Nigeria, New Nigeria People's Party, Rabi Kwakwanso, declaring what he is going to do yes. if he becomes elected as a president. So he said that he was going to declare free, um, nobody will be paying registration fees for the WAEC, the JAMP, or even NECO. He also said that one of the things mm -hmm. he's going to do is that when your result comes out from your JAMP, that's your... Um, joint administration, ad admission and matriculation board exams, it is that, that result is valid 
for four years. So people wouldn't have to keep doing every exams year, yes. every oh, year. That I felt was innovative. It didn't say anything concerning um, removal of fuel subsidy, and it was asked specifically, but he said he, did, he didn't make any statements concerning removal of fuel subsidy, but he said that he's going to take out 20 million out of school children back into school by a four-year process of building 40 blocks of classroom <coughs> per local government mm. over the course of its four years, and that if, if he builds those classrooms and children go into the school, 20 million children will be out of school. I like uh, the, These I like, are some of the specifics Nigerians yes. are looking for, not, yeah. the, not the vague yeah. promises. Yeah. So this is a good, that's good. Yeah, but okay, they should be careful you. that they don't over-promise. Yeah, this and, one that you're saying, and under-deliver, that you're mm. going to take out um, payment of examinations. Where are we going to fund it? We constantly hear we don't have money. Yeah, that's Please true. just be smart yeah, about it. Don't over-promise so yeah. that we don't hold you against it. Any so story? The NDLEA spokesperson said that the NDLEA has declared the owner of Adekar's Hotels and um, Adekar's Global Integrated Services, um, Ademola Kazim, wanted. And this is because um, after the arrest of one of his mules, is wanted for sponsoring and trafficking um, anti um, narcotic, uh, sorry, narcotics across from Nigeria to other countries like Dubai, UAE and other countries around the world. And he uses mules. And one of the, his mules was arrested at the airport. His name is Bolu Joko Babalola. He's a BRT driver. Hmm. And of course, immediately his name was mentioned. He's been invited by the agency over hmm. and over. He has refused to show up. He has gone underground. And so the SSA also secured a court order to attach his properties in Lagos, Ibadan, and 217 million naira in his account. Wow. To this um, investigation and all of that presently, That's they've declared him wanted. That well. name sounds familiar. Very popular. Mm, yeah. He's a socialite. Yeah, Sounds... so I know that name. Okay, let's move on now to Daily Sun. <clears throat> or Tom gives article conditions for support. Medical trip, Buhari not transmitting power to Oshibaju on constitutional state clock. EFCC arrests Kogi Assembly candidates with cash of 326 <coughs> million naira and $610,000. Goodness gracious. One person. <laughs> One person. Mm. Oh, my Lord. I, uh, one feared dead as fire guts building in Lagos. Outrage as Davido's <clears throat> son drowns at home. 2023, Okoa to Igbo, don't abandon PDP candidate, your son-in-law. Oshun drama as INEC denies the own document at tribunal. Okay, which story are we taking in Daily Sun? So I want to take the medical leave. So um, the, the... Our president, right? Yes, president, um, uh, medical leave. So the... Leader of um, PANDEF, uh, the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Chief Edwin Clark, the Iowa Youth Consultative Forum, the Middle Belt Forum, all of these um, 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 bodies are criticizing the president's move to travel out of the country for two weeks in November and without uh, handing over to the vice president. They said that Section 145 of the Constitution clearly states that whenever he's on medical leave, when he leaves the country for medical leave, he must hand over by writing a letter to the National Assembly, uh, the uh, President of the Senate and the, uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives and hand over to the Vice President. But the President, after that initial um, you know, um, travel that he had to do in 2019, he's always said that he's only required to do so if he's leaving for more than 21 days. And that is an importation into the constitution is a foreign is an importation of a foreign body into the constitution because the constitution does not limit or specify the days when it's required. It says as soon as it is for medical, whatever reason, he must hand over. And so they've stated this issue. I hope he addresses it properly. Right. Still reviewing Daily Sun. Yes, yes. go ahead. So, uh, fire got it seems expected to belong to Savers Bank under construction at Adiola or Deccan Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. So according to the information provided by a few bystanders, they said the fire was caused by a generator explosion uh, reportedly being worked on by four people. So it just exploded and spilled oil around the area and affected other parts of property beside Keystone Bank. Also, a car belonging to Rapid Response Squad was burnt outside the building. I think I saw pictures of that in, on social media. There's six persons, especially the policeman attached so the rapid response uh, squad was injured by broken glasses while he was struggling to you know, get out of the car when it caught fire. So according to the Lagos police spokesman, uh, SP Benjamin Houdain, said all six uh, victims were, have been put on admission at the hospital under observation. The policeman who sustained minor injuries is receiving uh, first aid treatment. 
but they also got an indication that uh, somebody was burnt beyond um, recognition and um, they're still trying to identify who that person is. So yesterday in Oyo State, the Benue State Governor Samo Otom was saying that um, Atiku would not get the support of the five governors of PDP who are yet to agree with the fact that IU would not <laughs> resign. So according to him, um, he from Benue, the governor from Oyo State, um, I think Abia State, Enugu, and uh, one more state, um, and River, and of course, Governor River State, um, Governor Wiki, and so in some Wiki, all have said that they wouldn't support Atiku Abubakar. Now, the issue is that he said that if, if, if Atiku, for example, thinks that he can actually become president without the support of these five governors, that he, obviously he, doesn't, he has something else coming. That, but I'm, I, I kind of fear that if, if a governor says, I'm not supporting, does that mean his followers cannot independently decide? To follow who they believe, so that's so that the was strength these, of the government's statements. Yeah, that's so. Is the so, people? It's well, heavy, yeah. I guess that's that's the norm. Mm -hmm. we, there's these days we've seen lots of things going away from the norm. So yes, these five governors are yet to agree. Are saying that if they cannot clean up the house within EPDP, they wouldn't support him for the. They for, should put their presidency. house in order if they yes. know it's good for them. Yeah, because yeah, other political parties they, are strong you now. Won't, even All of you them now. Reach out to the person you need now. Why are you? Even Kasim said, "Tim, I said yesterday that if you cannot sort out your house, hey, how do you, you want, want to sort out your house? You have to fix the country. That is wow. impossible. So they need to fix this problem. So I want to take the story from um, the chief whip of the Senate, uh, Senator Oji Uzokalo, former governor of Abia State. He won the award as the he emerged 2022 best senator of the year, the year in constituency project. The poll, it was an online poll organized um, and monitored by the news agency of Nigeria." And he was able to get 283,000 people to vote for him and defeated the closest um, competitor who, was, who got 83,000 votes. That's Senator Adetokubo Abiru. Now, the reason he got the votes, was, according to the paper, was because of the constituency project that he raised, that he was able to um, um, influence 50 roads to be constructed within the Abia North local government within three years. He also made, they also said that he was able to facilitate sharing of a thousand sewing machines, generator, motorcycles to farmers and artisans, among <coughs> others. And this is the basis for the election. I wish we can pull this much vote for um, when, they are, when, he's, when he's recontesting at the end of the day. But okay, moving on quickly to, quick, to the Nigerian Tribune. EFCC rates Abuja Forex traders' offices. Mm. Passengers stranded as aviation union shuts down Lagos Airport. 1.4 billion naira bank fraud. EFCC arrests Kogi Assembly candidate with over... 326 million naira and um, $610,000 in his account. NDLA declares Lagos socialite wanted for alleged drug offenses. Gunmen released four Ibadan bound travelers abducted in Ikiti. Action plan APC wants to reinforce hopelessness, <clears throat> says Atiku campaign organization. Tinubu meets business leaders in Lagos and Afeniferi endorsed OB based on national interests at the banjo. So let me take that story. Um, so the Leader of the pan Yoruba social political group Afeni Ferry Pa Ayo Adebanjo reiterated yesterday again that his support for Peter Obi is based on national interest and remains sacrosanct. He was saying that what we saw play out where Pa Fashion Ronsi was seemed to have endorsed Ashwaj Bola Metinubu was just mere politics. Uh, why are we supporting Obi? The constitutional, logical, and equity <coughs> reasons. Those are the reasons why they believe that the Afeni Ferry is supporting Peter Obi. None of them can claim to love the Yoruba people more than me, says Ayo Adebanjo. No Yoruba man living. I am challenging them to come out if there is any organization in existence that surpasses Afeni Ferry in protecting Yoruba interests. So he was trying to say that his, his support for Peter Obi is sacrosanct and that um, all we are seeing playing out is just politics. Okay, so the passengers were stranded at the FSS to the entrances. <coughs> Air Transport Service Staff Association of Nigeria. They are protesting the sack of 57 workers by management of the private oil terminal, Fortney Aviation. Said that four of those 37 are their members. And the Ibom Air, management of Ibom Air, confirmed this yesterday in their own announcement to all their customers yesterday. Said this is to bring to the attention of passengers and public that operating terminals are out. Uh, operating terminals out of Lagos, MM2, operated by Bicotony Aviation Services Limited, have been completely closed off. Workers, passengers alike, by the labor union early this month. <coughs> currently being made to resolve the issue of the, the time of the 
Okay, Vanguard quickly, how our fight insecurity boosts the economy by Tinumbu. Fashion Rotti had a bunch of fight over of Ferry's leadership. Medical vacation, Bari must hand over to Oshimba Jose's clock. NECA backs FG on fuel subsidy removal. Kaduna Christians paid over 300 million naira mm -hmm. to bandits, can't perform pilgrimage, says can. Um, Ohanese, mm -hmm. Igbo leaders mm -hmm. mourn as Umba Zulike Amechil um, Zikis dies at age of 93. Police quit eight domestic staff over death of David's son and Forex turnover in INE for 69% to $1.5 billion. Okay, which story? Uh, the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria and Kaduna State, Reverend John Joseph Hayab, uh, spoke when he hosted the Executive Secretary, Kaduna State Pilgrim Welfare Agency, Malam Yusuf, uh, who visited the um, Khan headquarters and was complaining that very few Christians now go on pilgrimage. And so he told him that... Um, Christians in the state have paid over 300 million to bandits as ransom, and so they can't afford to go for pilgrimage. And the fact that um, it's not even the pilgrimage issue that is more of their concern. Mm -hmm. They are more concerned about uh, the security of their places. Right now, they're not complaining so much that uh, kidnapping is happening in Kaduna State, but it's still happening. And they're just trying to work hand in hand with security agencies to see how they can solve this issue. And it you know, was asking, how did you get the data that you had? A Christian Association um, members had paid over 300 million. They said they took a sample to 1,500 pastors and they were asking them how many people were kidnapped in your church, how much did you pay for ransom, and that was how they got that data. And they said the money now, the offering that people now pay is now used to pay ransom in that sort of state. Yeah, yeah. So pilgrimage is the least of their issues at okay. the moment.